Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about the WeDo 334 printer. Not even sure what it's called yet. It's supposed to be released on Kickstarter like today or tomorrow or something like that. I'll add a link down below once that happens. Um, this is an established company. All the warnings of Kickstarter are necessary. You are funding, you know, by the grace of your good graces, a company. They don't have to produce anything. So there's always a risk, but this is an established company. They're using it as a marketing platform like most other major manufacturers do today. So it's a relatively safe thing. Uh, what we're going to talk about is what I've done with this printer for the last month. So stay tuned. So we do is the company that made the little Tina 2 printer that I love so much. I really like that little Tina 2. I actually brought that to Murph with me. Last time I went to Murph, and I like that printer a lot. It's a very cute little printer, reasonably well built. I never had any problems with it. I liked how compact it was. Uh, oh, of course, I'm yawning. Yeah, I'm recording a video, so of course I'm yawning. <laughs> so I got this a bit over a month ago. We did a live stream where we built it and put it together. I'm not going to show you too much normal stuff because, well, it's a 334. It's a 300 by 300 by 400 printer, like pretty much every 334 printer you've seen out there. I'm going to talk about what makes this thing different from any other printer. It's not a review. This is just my experience with it so far and what I think of it so far. I didn't make too many regular prints, you know, a Benchy, a couple of vases, you know, I made some rocket parts with it. You know, this is my um, little rocket part. And I very quickly realized, you know, when I get a 334 printer, I, I don't print little things with it. So anymore, you know, when I get a, a printer that's 334 or larger, the first thing I do is I modify it for making big prints. Um, not too much modification on this. Um, matter of fact, one modification only. I changed the nozzle. So I removed the brass nozzle and I installed um, E3D's 1.4 millimeter CHT nozzle. You read that right. 1.4 millimeter. So these prints will be relegated to the little printers. And what we're going to do is big prints. Really big prints, or at least fat prints. Um, what I mean by fat is fat layers. So I can print very large items very rapidly. So for example, you guys saw the, um, the makeshift rocket, Paul Anderson's makeshift rocket. So I modeled that using barrels and crates, and there'll be a top to the crate here and not printed on this machine. Really? I even got the little the little astronaut pilot who sits out the top of the rocket <laughs> and he'll be launched. Uh, that was printed on a CR6 SE, but all of this is um, vase mode printed. So all of these components are modified to be vase mode printable and this is ABS. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can get away with open air ABS and ASA printing when you use big giant fat nozzles. You got to make sure not to go too fast because even no matter how fat your nozzle is, you're still going to have the internal forces as the plastic shrinks wanting to rip those layers apart. Um, so you got to slow down enough to make sure it can fully melt that 1.4 millimeter wide, you know, 0.4 millimeter tall layer to make sure they truly stick together. But what you do, <laughs> you know, this is all, can I take it apart? Yes, I can probably. I'm not going to, but you can see there's a tube going up the center. And all of these vase mode parts just slide onto the tube, and you make an entire rocket that way. So I'm going to hopefully have a chance to try to fly that this summer. I think it's a three-inch tube, I want to say. It's either three or four-inch tube. And then I have a, a nose cone for it. But that was the first real big print I made. I then got um somebody gave me the challenge of, you know, can I vase mode print a watering can? And I kind of underestimated how big it was <laughs> it's big <laughs> a little too big i gotta make it about half this size because that that's that's way overkill so that is a complete vase mode filamentum or no, i'm sorry filament one asa pro in natural so no die that's asa this is what happens if you go i got greedy i tried to crank up the speed and it de lambed on me right there at the top. See those two splits? Once I realized that I slowed down and it stopped splitting, 
what happens if you go faster the plastic doesn't melt quite as hot and you don't get that um, good bond between the layers and they're able to be done so down here is fine just right up top here because I ran a little too fast um, but still that's pretty darn nice that's an open air ASA raised mode print so that was pretty cool once I finalize the scaling of that I will have that on the reverse and then um, I got really addicted to these little EDC cases it's a, a little screw together case I'll put a link down below to mine and it'll connect with a remix but basically uh, it's this so this is again this is printed in um, filamentum vertical gray I think yeah I think it's filamentum vertical gray and this is printed at um, 0.4 millimeter layer height 1.4 millimeter extrusion and I printed at 250 percent scale and it's a, a little case so I got a whole bunch of batteries in here this is normally about well, two and a half times smaller than this um, and I want to see could I print it in other materials well yes so I printed um, you guys remember I was playing with that little gizmo to join filament together and it printed that without a problem let me give you a close-up of that so that is five different pieces of filament joined together and then fed through the we do printer today's mode printed but because it's 1.4 millimeter that is really strong like i cannot bend that with my bare hands it would take two hands i could probably break it but i squeezed it pretty hard and it didn't give when you print that thick it's kind of cool um asa um phase mode cover for it minimalist cover i also tried PETG. now these two prints are really messed up it is not the printer both of these filaments are wet i did not run them through a dryer i was like you know something let's see what happens you know with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle it's going to fail but with a 1.4 millimeter nozzle you get an interesting effect so this is what wet PETG looks like it kind of looks like that fuzzy skin that you get I could almost get it on both cameras <laughs> it kind of gives you that wet skin look I actually thought that was pretty cool I'm actually thinking about leaving that PETG wet just because I kind of dig that effect on the skin you know just use that roll for phase mode prints so I mean besides you, you can hear the snap crackle pop of the moisture what happens is when filament is wet the water inside the filament literally flashes to steam water boils at 212 degrees or 100 celsius and you're putting it into a hot end that's you know well over 450 degrees fahrenheit yeah because i was pretty at 255 celsius i don't know what that is in fahrenheit but i was pretty high it's over 450. so but again asa cover and i wanted to design my own because i don't like i didn't like this design it also wasn't optimal for vase mode printing it's a pretty steep angle it worked on this because it was a 1.4 millimeter wide extrusion so really fat nozzle this is even more interesting <laughs> uh, i couldn't believe the thread still worked that is what happens when you have moisture in tpu and yes even with that moisture and the flashing to steam this printer still managed to print tpu without a problem now it's a Bowden tube, so obviously you had to print slow. And this wasn't like Ninja Flex where it's super, super flexible, but this is definitely TPU. And I was like, it's full of holes. <laughs> That's how much snap, crackle, and pop is going on. Again, that is not the printer. That is wet filament. Uh, I will be drying that roll of TPU because I do want to make some nice TPU prints. And obviously that's not going to print nice if it's all full of water. But it printed fine. I was blown away how well it printed the TPU. Again, that is a result of the filament being wet. Nothing to do with the printer. <laughs> and of course, I did one in pure ASA. So this is um, filament one ASA natural. And it printed absolutely beautifully like butter. It actually blows my mind how cleanly ABS and ASA print. I mean, even with a big fat 1.4 millimeter extrusion. I mean, that's just a nice print. Come on, autofocus. Am I too close? I mean, that just came out so nice. 
I mean, of course, it's vase mode, but still. I mean, that's gorgeous. Um, and they're watertight. These are airtight. So these will hold air. Obviously, the joint between the two is not watertight, so I'd need some sort of a seal in there. But the two individual containers will hold water. And that one was also printed in vase mode. There's my slice. Come on. There's my cut going through the model to connect the outside wall with the inside wall to allow it to be vase mode printable. As you can see, when you use a thinner nozzle, so this is one printed on um, a thinner model. You can see it's much more flexible because it's, well, you can see it broke away down there. That was printed on the CR6 SE. But this was just single wall vase mode. This was double wall vase mode because I wanted both surfaces. In order to print this single wall, it needs to look like that. The inside needs to be the same as the outside because that's vase mode. But by using double wall, I can keep my knurled outside and have it match the inside. And again, to a, this is large enough to be like a, a micro cache. And um, I have it out in the car. I don't feel like going to get it. I also printed one of these. Um, it's this big. <laughs> it's like that big. Yeah. I've been leaving it out in the car to make sure the ASA can handle the temperature and so far. It's been fine. Blown away. I am super, super happy about that. My sister wants one of these now, so i got to get some pink ASA so I can print her one. And then I also printed the Taco Recycler. <laughs> I love this. I modified the files to print um, in vase mode. So, well, I didn't have to modify this. I just printed it in vase mode, and it printed fine. Um, normally, that angle would be way too much for vase mode. But because, again, I'm printing with a 1.4 millimeter wide nozzle, I can get away with that. Um, this print it in like a third the time it normally takes. I'm running at 20 millimeters a second, and it's still printing in like a third to a quarter of the time it would normally take to print, just because you're printing in base mode. <laughs> so it's fast and it's strong. Um, this is probably not coming off of here. It's rammed on there pretty good. But um, this is also printed in vase mode. I put a cut here, a cut here, and a cut here, so that this whole piece here could also print in vase mode. Um, this had an issue. It had a hard time. It had a hard time printing these. This printed great, but this had a hard time. Insufficient cooling. Now remember, this was designed to work with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which would have no cooling problems. That's because I'm printing at 260 Celsius with a 110 degree bed or 100 degree bed, and um, these little tiny towers with a 260 degree nozzle. So they got overheated, and they got real melty. I had to take a knife and shave them down in order to make them fit. I have an idea for how to make that work with a 1.4 millimeter nozzle. So I'm trying to reduce the number of pieces that I print this with. And my typical trick in saving time, I don't use any bottom layers, which saves me about an hour of print time. Because three bottom layers, probably, well, maybe a half hour. Three bottom layers probably would have taken 30 minutes to print. So um, no bottom layers because you don't need it. it. It stands up just fine. So the way this works, this is great. Yeah, you, tacos are messy. You know, you, you eat the taco, you eat the burrito, and it spills stuff all over the place. Well, now, you eat above this on the table. So you have this on the table in front of you, and you put a fresh taco shell underneath, or either a tortilla shell or a hard taco shell, whatever you want. You put your taco shell underneath, and then you eat above it. And as your debris falls in, the funnel catches it and fills the new taco so when you're done eating your tacos you get a bonus taco <laughs> i love it it's great it's fantastic that's just that's just wonderful uh the ideas people come up with is just so i'll be releasing a, a remix of this on thingiverse you know for the modified files um i think i have it <sighs> come on i think i have an idea for how to make this part and this part one piece in vase mode just extend um this bit here up into the vase into the cone and then I could print this whole thing as one piece. Um, but I might have to print this as two pieces. So print this base with two holes in the bottom. And then print these separately and stick them in the holes. So I may or may not try that. Or I might just slow down and increase the fan speed. I also added these little gussets. So it would be a little stronger. But yeah, that's impressive. Um, I'll, I'll remember to put a link down below for these files and thingy first where I get them. Um, so let's talk about the printer. Um, a couple, I've been using it for over a month now, so I have some experience with what I'm using it for. 
I love the fact that they're using a PC build surface on a um, wham bam style um, magnetic flex plate. Wonderful. Good job on switching to the PC build surface. That means you can um, even turn down or even turn off the heat at times. It's a good print surface. I've had zero issues with stiction. Then again, uh, a 1.4 millimeter extrusion sticks to pretty much everything. <laughs> when, when you extrude a, a layer of plastic that fat, you don't tend to have first layer issues. Everything tends to stick. <laughs> um, um, the, the, so far, the only problems I've had with the printer can all be fixed in software. So far, all the problems I've had are software issues. So they should be very fixable. None of them are fatal. You know, no fatal flaws. Um, I'm having difficulty getting it to set my zero point for the ABL. It has a capacitive sensor for doing the bed mesh leveling. And that seems to work pretty good. Except, um, in, I don't know if it's because I changed the nozzle or... I don't know. I'm off by 1.35 millimeters every time. Now, the thing is... It's exactly 1.35 every time. So I go into baby steps and I go down, 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 down to 1.35 and I'm perfect every single time. So it is consistently uh, measuring the correct offset. It's measuring an offset correctly every time. So it's the same offset. It's not like it's changing. Like my one CR6SE, it's anywhere from um, 0.25 to 0.65 off every time I level it. I don't know why. The one works perfectly every time. The other one is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> now you update the firmware because the one that is a nightmare is the Beatty in it, and the one that works great is the Kickstarter delivery unit that I paid for. So maybe I just need to update the firmware. But um, um, besides that, I so I just have to baby step down 1.35 every time that I do a print. Not a huge deal. Um, I'm assuming that'll be fixed in firmware. I was a little bit concerned about the janky um, filament holder. The, the spool rod itself is great, but the actual bracket is a little bit janky. But I've put 20 kilograms of plastic through this thing in the last month. Maybe not 20, maybe 15 kilograms. A lot of plastic. You, you burn through a lot of plastic when you print big fat stuff like this. Um, and no issues. So I'm not going to complain about it. Um, um, I like the fact that everything is stamped metal. So the shroud for the... I'm recording. So the frame of the printer is stamped um, metal. Everything's all metal. Nice big color touch screen. Um, the shroud around the hot end, metal. The fans are pretty quiet, although, as expected, one of the interior fans is starting to get noisy. I don't know if that's the power supply fan or the internal brain box cooling fan. I'll have to take it apart and figure out which fans get noisy. But common issue, hydraulic bearings, they suck. Um, the rest of the fans are actually pretty darn quiet. So they are starting to address the issue of fans. Um, lead screw is no problem. I love the fact that they store the lead screw inside the frame rail so it can't get damaged during shipment. That was great. Um, quality of the machining, good. No issues. All the bolts were able to turn in by hand. No flashing. No um, shavings. Um, no clogged threads. So they did a good job of cleaning all that up. All the metal seems thick enough. The bed seems thick enough. I don't like the fact that they use the silver springs on the bed, even though it's like a $2 fix for us. I would like to see them use the, um, the yellow dye compression springs. They're just more stable. They're just better springs. Nice wide footprint for the Y-axis. I like that. Um, the X-axis is a thin 10x10 10 10 or 20 by, no, 20 by 20 rail, but very stiff so far. Um, it's kind of weird. They lubricated the roller wheels. Like there's actually a lubricant on the roller wheels. Not sure why they did that. I was concerned that it would be a dust and debris magnet, but so far, no. Um, so far, in fact, it's been perfectly fine. Zero issues whatsoever. I was really surprised by it. Give you guys something to look at in here so it's not so boring. Um, um, I was really surprised by that. I was expecting a much bigger issue with the, um, the lubrication on the wheels, which I found odd. But there's, I mean, I've got hundreds of hours on this machine now, and they're not dirty. So I'm not sure how they did that, or it's just been unusually low amount of dust here recently. I don't know, but it's fine. Um, 
Touchscreen's good. There's a couple of issues, again, in firmware that concern me that I would like to see fixed. Not a big deal, just things I would like to see fixed. So, for example, there's no fan control. I'd like to see that. Um, the option to change the print speed is junk. Please change that to a touchpad where I can pick how much time I want because I only have a choice between 50 and 100. There's, I want 75. There's times where I just want to slow it down a little bit. I don't want to slow down to 50%, but I don't want to run it 100%, and I don't want to reslice it. So either give me more buttons to pick more granularity and speed, 600% uh, or 300% for increasing the speed. It's kind of pointless. <laughs> no one's going to increase the speed that much. What we need is more granularity and slow down speeds. So give me a 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, and a 25. Um, or just give me a touchpad and let me punch in what I want for the print speed or the feed rate. Um, preheat is annoying. Um, it seems to have a fixed preheat, and if you go outside of the parameters that it likes for preheat, it just won't do it. So, for example, I can't preheat the printer to 100, 260. It won't preheat the nozzle above 200. It'll go above 200, but it won't preheat the nozzle above 200, which is kind of annoying. And also, um, it will not hold a preheat. So, when you select the option to preheat PLA, for example... Um, when you hit cancel to go to the print menu, it turns off the heaters. So both the bed and the nozzle start to cool down before you can get into the print menu and print an object. And now it's got to heat back up again. So that needs to be fixed. When I, when I preheat, um, I should be able to get to the print menu and select my print without the heaters turning off. There needs to be a way of keeping that going. So right from that preheat menu, there should be a print option which will then bring up the list of G-code files on the printer, and I can pick which one I want, and I'll already be at the held temperature. So, that again, that's a minor software issue. That's a minor bug that they can fix pretty easily. I was concerned about how tight the Bowden setup is. It's a, it's a rather interesting setup. So let me try to show it to you here. So there it is. So here's your feeder coming in, your sensor to read it. Okay. I would like to see... Um, a Bowden tube come out of here, a little piece of Bowden tube to help with capturing the um, friction from this. But this is a pretty tight bend loop coming in here like that. But um, so far, non issue. Um, every filament that I uh, throw at this thing, it prints it just fine, including TPU. No problem going through that bend. So I'm going to call that a non issue. Um, stability has so far not been a problem. It's been rock solid. It's a aluminum extrusion 334. They are pretty solid machines nowadays, so that's really not an issue. Um, I like the fact that the IEC and the power switch are up here at the front left where they're easy to get to. Pull that power plug or um, mess with that power switch. Although the memory card is at the opposite side, which is kind of annoying. Not a huge deal. Depends on your setup. Um, bed was nice and flat. I had zero issues with that. The bed leveling sensor worked great, but the offset system is not so great. So again, that's a firmware issue, not a printer issue, meaning it's something they can easily fix by adjusting in firmware. Um, anything else? I like the unified cable. So they have a nice big unified cable. I mean, we're talking a uh, pretty heavy duty, you know, loomed cable coming out of the machine right here. I like that a lot. Um, and it's also secured coming out of the machine. It's zip-tied and secured for strain relief, which is fantastic. And the the bed cable is underneath. Uh, where is that at? It's hard to even get to it. It's on the other side, I think. Where are you at? Um, logically set up. Somebody put a little bit of thought into setting up the wiring management. That big bundle goes to a... Um, a plug, a socket, like a PC socket, a uh, ribbon cable socket. And then there's a breakout board there, and everything from the hot end and the feeder unit and the X-axis motor all go to the breakout board, which is nice for maintenance. Um, that'll make making repairs, making updates, you know, replacing parts. That'll make it relatively easy. You don't have to uh, feed a wire. I keep yawning. I don't know why. You don't have to worry about feeding a wire through the entire loom because you have to replace a thermistor or a heater cartridge or something like that. So that's nice. I like seeing that. Um, 
The feeder is simple, works fine, no issues with it. Um, the only thing I don't like is the feeder and the um, filament sensor are one unit. So if one breaks, you got to replace both. I mean, not an end of the world scenario. It's probably 10 or 15 bucks, but it's something to think about. Although an integrated unit does feed better. I have a pretty easy time feeding a piece of filament through this. It's not bad. As long as you make sure the end of that filament is straight and not like that, <laughs> you know, you'll be fine. It'll just give it a little 45 and it goes right through, no problem. Um, so far, I've been pretty pleased with the performance. Um, cooling is fine for 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I had no issues. Slightly lackluster the way I have it set up now, but again, I'm kind of really pushing this machine pretty hard. That's a 1.4 millimeter vase mode print. So I'm, I'm really asking a lot of it, and it's it's doing it. It's cranking out prints every day. Uh, this machine has been sitting on my bench here for the last month because I use it daily. <laughs> it's just... It's, it's it's not it's not too far off from the Chiron. It's just being a workhorse. It's being a nice, good, solid workhorse. And I absolutely, positively love that they included a Ram Bam style flex plate. So here is my the flex plate that they sent me. They actually had to send me one of these because um uh, the printer didn't include one. <laughs> they forgot to include it. <laughs> so there's none in the box. So I'm sticking my little. My smaller Ram Bam sheet on there to test prints out. You guys remember that from the stream. But they did send me a weedy one. And you can see I've put a lot of prints through this. And a lot of um, 100 degree ASA prints. And so far that surface has been holding up good. This is a good PC surface. You know, I just got all the debris off there. So good job. Nice good stiction. I have no problems with it pulling up the magnetic surface so far. It seems to have a good grip holds well 100 i've done at least 100 hours alone at abs and asa temperature so that's a 100 degree celsius bed and the magnets are not degaussing so they are using a high enough curry temperature magnetic surface so it's not losing its magnetic power from heat which can be a problem for magnets so whether by accident or by intent um, they did address that i would like to see a little more power going to the bed I don't know if that's um, pushing the limits of the power supply, where maybe they need to use a larger power supply, or if it's um, if that can be configured somehow. I'm not sure, but um, it gets to 90 degrees pretty quickly, but it really struggles to get from 90 to 100. Once it gets to 100, it holds it fine, but it, it, it takes a little while to get that last 10 degrees to 100 degrees. I haven't tried to go hotter because I haven't had a need. Um, so far, I'm impressed. It's, it's, there's nothing super special about it. It's, it's just a, a high quality 334. So think, you know, CR10, but higher quality. You know, they've had 10 years to make improvements to it. Um, not much improvements, just mostly quality control, creature comforts. It is a micro SD card slot. I was worried about how big that opening is and cards getting lost in there, but I've been inserting and removing cards blind, meaning I just reach over and feel it. And so far, no issues. So I'm going to give them the benefit on that. Um, bolt selection seems to be good. I haven't noticed any stripping. haven't had any problems. Um, I can't think of anything else. It just works. I've basically had zero issues with this machine from day one for over a month. I've been running this machine daily for a month, and it has not given me problems. And because it's got my 1.4 millimeter nozzle on there, and because it's proven itself capable of making very clean uh, top layers on a fat nozzle are always a little janky. I really should use more infill for that, but, you know, I'm cheap. And this is just holding taco, so I don't care. <laughs> but um, the um, layer performance is very good, very consistent. It hasn't given me any issues, no binding issues. It just works. Not bad. Not bad at all. Would I suggest getting it? I don't know. Depends on what its price is going to be. <laughs> um, it is a good quality machine, that's for sure. And if it is price competitive with other similar machines, I would say maybe yes. Um, remember, it does include some pretty nice upgrades that don't normally come with a printer. Uh, silent steppers. Magnetic removable steel plate print surface. A very large color touchscreen. One thing I don't like, 
I understand why they do it, and it does seem to work very well, except for the firmware issue where it's not setting the offset right. It homes at the top. So it goes all the way to the top, homes, and then comes down. Now, it doesn't take that long, because they, they overdrive the Z-axis stepper motors. Um, it is single access, like you know the original CR-10, which is perfectly fine. You, uh, I am not a advocate of, it must have dual Z. 334s three, three, are fine, single Z. It's not a problem. Um, if you have a problem with the single Z, it's because you have binding somewhere. You need to fix whatever's wrong with the printer. Overall, no issues with the single Z. Of course, double Z would be nice, but it's not a game changer. It's not an end of the world. Um, the, um, um, but the one issue I do have is that by homing at the top, it's a 400 millimeter differential between printing and homing. So it unspools the filament when it homes. <laughs> so the, the filament, obviously, the roll, the filament roll is unwound because it's pulled the filament down 400 millimeters, you know, from here to here. And when that head goes all the way back up to the top to home at the top, well, the spil filament roll doesn't wind itself back up. So sometimes the filament can pop over the edge of the roll. And now when it goes back down, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> so um, when it homes, you know, reach up there and, you know, tighten up that roll a little bit as it's homing to make sure that filament doesn't jump over the edge of the spool. Beyond that, no issue. I would still like to see the filament spool holder improved. It's almost, um, they put a lot of effort into making the machine very polished, very nice, very good quality control. And then even the spool itself is very nice, CNC machined, aluminum, threads, everything, very nice. But the actual bracket itself was like an afterthought. It's like, it's almost like they finished designing the printer, forgot they didn't design a spool holder, so just grab them off the shelf, we'll stick it up there. <laughs> you know, so it was like it was an afterthought. So I'm hoping they'll, they'll polish that up a little bit just because it would look nicer. Why not? Um, that's it. I can't think of anything else to mention. Um, like I said, all of the issues that I've encountered are firmware issues that can easily be fixed in firmware, and I do expect them to do that. Um, I will let you know if I get a firmware update and what issues it does or does not address. Um, sometimes manufacturers don't issue firmware updates. But the things that I would like to see changed, I would like to see um, fan control. I would like to see more granular um, feed rate control. I'd like to see the preheat um, preheat to whatever temperature I tell it to. So if I tell it to preheat to 250, I want it to preheat to 250. Instead of just sitting there looking at me, pretending it's doing it, but it's not. Um, not a huge deal. It's probably just an oversight. And then that preheat needs to stay active when I leave that screen and go to start a print. You know, the whole point of preheat is to preheat the printer so it's ready to go when I'm ready to print. Um, so when, like, when I'm getting ready to slice a file, I'll hit preheat. So that by the time I'm done, you know, dicking around inside the slicer and I got the G-code on the SD card, the printer's heated up and it's ready to go right away. Uh, you could print things fast. I mean, this prints in like two hours, if that, hour and a half maybe. This, this prints fast. For something that big, it prints really fast. Um, but, um, yeah, that's it. Offset, fan control, more granular, um, feed rate control. Um, better preheat and a locked preheat that'll actually hold until I begin printing. You know, you know, have a print button on that preheat screen that brings up the file list and lets me pick my file without turning off the heaters. Um, and you know, put a nice polished spool holder on there. Beyond that, everything's good. I, I have no real complaints. Um, I'll find out about the fan. I'm gonna I'll have to take it apart one day. I'm using it so much that I just haven't had a chance to bring it down so that I can tear it apart. I just I, I finish a print and I want to start the next one. Because <laughs> it's a workhorse. It's, just, it's a good machine. Um, beyond that, I'm happy with it. I will keep you updated. Um, this is going to remain a workhorse because it's got my 1.4 millimeter nozzle on it. So I will give you an update in two months. I'll give you an update in six months. I'll let you know if the machine continues to perform adequately. Um, so far, it gets a thumbs up from me. I like it. Where's my mouse? Right here in front of me. <laughs> so I can hit the stop recording button. <laughs> um, the, the Kickstarter, I don't think it'll start it yet. I just searched for it. I couldn't find it. I don't even know what the name of it is. Um, it's not 
uh, well, it might be the ME40. The ME40 Pro is the two into one. This is a single. Just It's like a CR10. It's just a single filament, single nozzle, um, which is nice because you can change the nozzle. I was worried the nozzle was a little weird, but when I got it off, it was a normal nozzle, and I was able to put the CHD nozzle on there, no problem. Um, so once they actually post the website or Kickstarter for it, I will add that link down below. I don't get nothing for that. It's not a commission link or anything like that. They just they sent me the printer free to get my feedback and for me to make some videos on it, and that's what I'm doing. So that's it. I will see you guys later. Oh, and Pygar, let me know if the audio is better in this video. Um, I I did a test on another video, which will be coming out in a week or so. Um, it's a future video, but um, I'm boosting the audio 200%, and I'm enabling a tiny bit of noise reduction. Um, that adds it, and I'm also doing a, a, a low bass pass filter on it to take out some of the bass. That seems to boost the voice volume quite a bit. Um, tiny bit echoey, but it seems to be clearer, seems to be louder, so let me know how that works. And I'll, don't forget to check out my other links down below. As usual, when you use my affiliate links, I earn a commission when you do that. Um, as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. That's required verbiage from Amazon. Um, so basically the way that works is you click on my filament one link and you order a roll of filament one filament, I get a small commission. You order something from Amazon, I get a small commission. You order something from eBay, I get a small commission. That's the way that works. It's an indirect passive income. It doesn't cost you anything. It makes me money. I also have Patreon. I also have PayPal. Uh, I got rid of the um, P.O. box because they doubled the price. It went from $59 to $119. And I was like, okay. Bye bye. <laughs> no more PO box. I'm not paying double the price. Uh, USPS. You need electronic PO boxes. Okay. What I need is a PO box that actually just forwards to this address. You know, because all I need is to shield my actual address, even though I suck at hiding that from the world. <laughs> How many times have I shared a box with an address on it? <laughs> um, but that's it. I will see you guys later. If you have any questions, ask down below. If, you, if there's something you want me to try, as long as it doesn't entail changing the nozzle, I'll give it a shot. So remember, I can't like I can't print my f bombs um, on this. Well, I guess if I triple the size of my f bomb, I can print it on this. <laughs> I'm getting into geocaches and I'm making geocache trinkets, so that's going to be fun. Um, that's it. I will see you guys later. You guys have a great day and thank you for watching my video.